Hey sweeties, how are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim. If this is your first time of coming across this channel, sweetheart, kindly smite that subscribe button, turn on the notifications so you get notified each time I upload, and please give this video a thumb up. I appreciate you all, and I want to say a very big thank you to every one of you for always coming back to watch my videos and subscribing. You all are super awesome. So today, this is something really very vital, something very important. It's actually about a white man. I have actually posted some of his videos like you know he's always spilling fat and nothing but fat all right so he was saying that there is always a conspiracy at food to rob black people of their breath and uh, some of it are like you know <clears throat> some people like black people do not even like they are not actually safe anywhere even in their own home at park like everywhere that there is there is always a conspiracy to rub them of their breath. And you know what? Stay close to the screen. Uh, let me roll the clip. Then we'll come back to talk about it. And let me know what you all think in the comment section about this video. So let me roll the clip. I can't breathe. George Floyd said this before his life was choked out of him under the knee of the state. But it has happened before. I can't breathe. Eric Garner said it 11 times while his murder was documented on July 17th. 2014. There is a conspiracy afoot to rob black people of their breath, if not at the hands of the police, then at the hands of politicians, policies, everyday white people in a park, in a neighborhood, at a convenience store, in the supermarket, even in their own home. There is not a place in this country where black people may relax and let down their guard against the mission to destroy them. I'm talking about systemic racism. Remaining silent is not an option. I'm pleading with white people, stop. Stop assuming black people are up to no good. Stop assuming that you have a right to dismiss the experiences of black people. Stop voting for politicians who aim to disproportionately incarcerate black bodies in the name of law and order. Stop assuming that conformity to white culture is superior and beneficial. Stop saying, if only they would comply with law enforcement. Stop saying, those individual white people are racist. When all of us white folks continue to benefit from the system that favors our melanin, we must acknowledge our privilege and dismantle the system that empowers this inequality. As Ashen T. Crawley compels us, this is a violence that cannot conceive a black flesh feeling pain, a violence that cannot think I can't breathe anything other than a ploy, a trick toward fugitive flight. There is a conspiracy of whiteness that wants to dismiss atrocities committed against black people as isolated events. White people are willing to label these horrid events as individual acts of racism, but refuse to recognize all of these isolated incidents are connected by a common characteristic, the death of black people at the hands of white people, often white people in positions of authority. Of course, this is nothing new. Since its inception, the United States has endeavored to relegate black bodies to the periphery, even if it means extinguishing their lives. Even a cursory survey of history will reveal that black people were brought to these shores to exploit their labor for the selfish ends of capitalism. They were brought here against their will to enrich white landowners and to maintain the white social hierarchy by ensuring that even poor white people would vote, behave, and even fight against their own best interest to maintain this white order. Whiteness continues to conspire against black bodies. The conspiracy colludes around a normative white culture that favors white lives at the expense of black lives. John Michael Vlock's book, The Planter's Prospect, Privilege and Slavery in Plantation Paintings, demonstrates that those who occupied powerless spaces did so because of an active collusion against them. This conspiracy of privilege was so entrenched in the culture that it even showed up in commissioned works of art. As Locke points out in the introduction, plantation vistas tended to omit most indications of agricultural labor. The exclusion of slaves from paintings of plantations was a powerful tactic that artists used to suggest the planter's undisputed command over his estate. 
The insecure nature of white power demands validation, even in its depiction of reality. This validation and justification were provided by various interpretations of the scenery and conditions on the plantations that often involved romanticizing or lack of specificity in the paintings. These works of art depicting plantation life function as a form of nostalgic denial of the realities of the horrors of slavery, serving to reinforce the perceived privilege of those who own the system and the victimization of those enslaved to it. Weak, insecure white leaders are still seeking to abolish black bodies from art, culture, history, life. As recent as President Trump refusing to unveil the official portrait of President Obama. This is how whiteness operates. It conspires to choke out the breath of blackness. There is a conspiracy of whiteness that refuses to acknowledge that racism infects our institutions. It continues to pollute our churches, our government, our judicial, economic, and educational systems. A conspiracy that calls the peaceful protest of Colin Kaepernick disrespectful while simultaneously applauding white folks for carrying guns and waving Confederate flags chanting freedom. The hypocritical irony, this, the only conspiracy white people won't believe is sadly, tragically true. You know, I have been following this man for a while and uh, I have also reacted to a few of his videos on my channel and I am sure some of you are already familiar with his face and the truth that uh, the truth that uh, the truth that he has been calling out his own people, telling them how bad they are, and he not just telling them, he is also telling them that they can do better. So this is more like a call for them to know this is what you all have been doing to black people, and still doing it. See, I might say, but like, you know, not all heroes wear cape. I really appreciate his, I mean, him coming out because it takes a lot of balls for people to come out to speak on things like this. I mean, this is something most of them, especially white people, do not want to come out and speak about because some of them are going to face like, you know, backlash from their own people, families, and all that. But the fact that he has been doing this, this and at the same time calling his own people to order calling them to see yeah like i remember there was yet yeah, for him to actually tell them like they all went out there to steal it is kidnapping they kidnapped black people brought them to their own and still have the balls like you know to treat them badly Anyway, I don't want to be all the judge, you know, I absolutely and definitely want to read all you all got to say about this. Why not? But I personally feel that he is speaking nothing but fact, truth, 100%. But I may not be all right if there is somewhere you think I am not getting it or he is not getting it. Why not? Feel free to let me know about that in the comment section. But I see that he is actually a great voice. He's a very great voice to black people. And yeah, so that is all I can say. And uh, thank you all so much for all your support. This is all I got for this video. Let me know what you all think in the comment section. And see you all in my next video. Bye for now.